Regular viewers of the Audiophiliac Daily Show know that Steve's not a fan of active speakers. Not. They're just too, they're too compromised. I'll talk a little bit about why as this goes on today. But let's say it's known that I'm not a big believer in active speakers. Let's say expensive ones. Cheap ones, sure. Desktop ones, I guess. But in terms of audiophile listening speakers in a living room or a listening room, no, they're not my cup of tea. But despite that, Andrew Jones is a brave man and he sent me a pair of ARB 51 active stand mount speakers. They're $2,000 a pair. I'll get into the particular soon. And then there's also a tower version of the speaker, the ARF 51, and those are $4,000 a pair. And before I forget to mention this part, I've known Andrew a long time, and the tower versions of his speakers of the bookshelves are the same line. They sound the same. It's not like when you buy the tower version, it sounds better. The tower version doesn't sound better. The tower version can play louder and make a little more deep bass, but basically as you AB them, and I have not with this one, but with other Andrew Jones models, they really do sound the same. So unless you're into loud or you have a huge room and you want to crank it, the little uh, ARB51, the Navis ARB51 for two grand is the way to go. And that's what I'm reviewing here. So it's an active speaker, but an active speaker it would be kind of like the active speaker that I would design if I had any capability of designing speakers. A, because it doesn't use any DSP. No digital signal processing is inside the guts of this speaker. Not a, not a tiny little bit. It's an all analog design. When the signal goes in through the analog inputs on RCA or an XLR, it's, a, it's analog, baby. <laughs> no way around it. And there are no digital inputs. Now, if you want to stream and do all that other stuff, you can buy a, a separate box uh, that the name escapes my mind at this minute, but I'll put it up on the screen. And there it is. So if you're hungry to hear music wirelessly, you can do it with the ARB51, but you have to buy a separate box to do it. Okay, not my thing, so I, I didn't go there. So the ARB is a three-way design with a one-inch soft dome tweeter concentrically mounted in a four inch aluminum mid-range driver and then there's a five and a quarter inch uh, woofer. Now each, each uh, driver has its own amplifier. The bass has a 160 watt amp, the mid-range has a 100 watt amp, the tweeter has a 40 watt amp. Now the, the classes of these amps is a little, little fuzzy. So the, the tweeter amp is referred to as a, an AB amplifier. Got it. Okay. The mid range and bass woofers are, well, when I talk to Andrew about it, here's, here's how he described it. They have, they're called bash amplifiers. He described it as it's a switching power su supply and a class AB output stage. He's adamant that they're not class D amplifiers, the mid range and woofer amps. Some people and stuff have referred to them as Class D. Andrew says they're bash amplifiers with AB output stages. So that differ that's a difference with a distinction because most uh, consumer smallish uh, active speakers use Class D amplifiers. Not to say all Class D amplifiers sound bad, <clears throat> just most of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking around. It's, it's not my favorite type of amplifier. This speaker is a very different kind of active speaker. So first, because it has no DSP. Second, because it has no digital input. Three, because <laughs> it sounds really nice. It's a gorgeous little speaker. And, and I'm trying to place it. I'm trying to put a label on what exactly is this speaker. And it is, mm, it's, it's an audiophile speaker first, a speaker designed to be listened to as opposed to have on in the background, which I think is true for a lot of wireless speakers, even expensive ones. So this is, a, this is a listener's speaker, but it's also sort of a lifestyle speaker in that since the amp is built into the speaker, all you need is a source. Now, I, I actually used it a couple of different ways. I had it in my main system being driven by a Pass Labs XB30 preamplifier and a shit Jagersal DAC. There's no DAC, I think this should be clear by this point, there's no DAC inside the speaker, the speaker is 
analog. So you have to use an external DAC, which is a good thing because if you own this speaker for a long time, DACs change and you can always upgrade your DAC and have new digital sound. But if you buy a, a speaker with a built-in DAC, mm. kind of stuck with the DAC that's inside the speaker. So I like that th there's no digital inputs or DAC inside the ARB51. Placing these speakers um, requires care, as all good speakers do. And I found them to be pretty directional, that is they needed to be towed in just so to really lock in the focus. And I really enjoyed them listening near field. Near field for me means four to five feet away from them and even better when I move them even further out into the room. So I think in the final resting place, they were about five feet away from the rear wall and the TV that's between the speakers. So um, given that, give these speakers space around them and they deliver space. The image is huge, just gigantic, holographic, nicely focused. I played Chesky recordings that I know really well because I was at the sessions. And in terms of recreating that sound that I remember, yeah, these little guys can do it. The ARB51 can nail that kind of realism. I think that those are real strong points. Now I will say right away that the tonal balance is on the warmish side of neutral. It's not one of those super analytical, aggressive sounding speakers. It's not like that at all. And oh, anyway, I also almost forgot something. The back of the speaker has EQ switches. Is what they are is level switches. They're turning up or down the amplifier for that channel, for that channel, for that driver. So it's not a monitor type ruthlessly revealing speaker. It is on the warm side of neutral. Now you can mess a little bit with the EQ switches and change that, but the basic character of the ARB1 is warm, inviting, easy to listen to, very low fatigue speaker. Um, the treble is very clear but not aggressive. Mid-range is probably the best part. It's got body, it's got soul. And the, and the woofer, well, the bass is um, surprisingly rich and full. Definition, mm, in low bass definition um, isn't, isn't a strength, but upper bass, mid bass and stuff is really, really good. Okay, now where am I gonna pick on the speaker? Well, I'm gonna say first that this isn't what I would call uh, a speaker for transparency hounds. If you're looking for super res, high res, no, this, this speaker's not gonna satisfy you. If you're looking for dynamic, wham, bam, aggressive, or even uh, small scale dynamics, it's good, but it's not, it's, not as, it's not like a clip speaker. It doesn't have that kind of tactile immediacy and jump factor of a klitsch. But different strokes for different folks. Some people will find the klitsch too aggressive and I doubt that anyone would find the ARB51 too aggressive. So uh, it's, it's for a certain type of buyer. But I think the key strength of the speaker is its listenability. You can just keep listening to it. You're not fussing about the sound. And sure, you can use it as a background speaker. But it is a speaker that draws you in. You really want to listen to the speaker. It's so I played uh, a Jimi Hendrix record, Electric Ladyland. And first of all, it starts with this weird uh, introduction that's very phasey. The sound is floating around. And that, especially in the near field, was mind-blowing. It was, it was trippy. It was like the 1960s are back. And then when it gets into the actual songs of the record, it just had this, this transporting quality that it just took you inside the recording. It's an amazingly accomplished sonic, I mean, it's amazing music. It's probably my favorite Jimi Hendrix record, especially ones that were re released when he was alive. But it's a trip, and the ARB51 took me on that trip. I also had the same experience when I listened to a band called Can, C-A-N, and their record called Future Days not, I think around the same period as the Jimi Hendrix record and also, but more, more like a German version of Pink Floyd. It's trippier, it's more rhythmically oriented. It's got this, this pulse to it. 
and the ARB 51 was, was, was delivering, delivering on that big time. And for more contemporary recordings, uh, one I would cite would be Radiohead's A Moon Shape, yeah, A Moon Shape Pool. Moon Shape Pool, that's what it's called, right? And uh, that's all about texture and tact just tactile things, and it was really, really, really extraordinary over the ARB 51. Okay, whole new story here. So uh, I'm finishing up the review and I get a delivery. I actually have two boxes. Uh, one was the Denifreps Terminator, their top of the line DAC. And I also got, coincidentally, at the same time, the Jay's Audio CD T2 Mark II CD Transport. They both come from the same distributor. Anyway, um, I said, oh, got to hook these puppies up. So I hook them up, started them playing, left it on repeat, came back a few hours later, sat down to listen, and it was one of those oh boy moments. First thing is, oh, well, I should say, uh, and up to this point, I was using the Sh Jager Cell 2 DAC, mated to an Oppo uh, UDP203 Blu-ray player used as a CD transport. So that's what I used up to this point, and from here forward, and just this little a follow-up part, I used the, the Denifreps and the Jay's Audio. And the difference was uh, startling. Starting with, <laughs> starting with, as they used to say in the audio biz, blacker blacks, blacker backgrounds. The stage had more depth. It was just the spaces between the instruments were just more, more real, more real, just, and it again, it wasn't it wasn't one of those hyped up detail things. No, it was actually relaxed, but vivid, and soulful, and it had ever it just brought everything into another level of focus. Now, mind you, the speakers are the same, the Elax, right? ARB 51s, but my opinion of them now being fed with a substantially better DAC, I think this is very early, right? But giving my first impressions, is made the speaker sound better, which is one of the, 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 the right things about doing it this way with having an analog only active speaker when, where the digital conversion takes place outside. As the DACs get better, the speaker gets better too. But anyway, I think what ELAC is doing here by having an all analog active speaker, this, this proves the theory that getting a better DAC radically, radically changes the sound of the speaker. Um, I don't do numerical ratings on things. I think that's kind of weird. But in this case, I'm going to throw one out because where before, if I gave this speaker on a 1 to 10 rating, if I gave it a, uh, let's say a seven and a half, eight, something like that, it would be more like eight and a half or nine now. It's a, it's a big difference. It's a very substantial difference. Now I will be reviewing the Denifreps Terminator and the Jay's Audio CDT to Mark II Transport uh, probably three or four weeks from now. So, because I just got them, I got other stuff to do too. But I just wanted to throw this into the ELAC review because it, cha it it's, it's a, it's, a, it's a game changer, basically, in terms of what I think of the sound. So I think we've done it. Um, and I think Andrew Jones has done it. He has made an active speaker that an audiophile and even the audiophiliac could love. And for that, hey, that's not, a, that's a slam dunk. You know, I mean, I lived with, um, I didn't live with it, but I attempted to review the Kef LS50 wireless. And I, I, it was, it was not. It wasn't good from the get-go because, first of all, trying to use it wirelessly with my phone, it was very, very glitchy. It just, it wasn't happening. I was getting too frustrated with it, and I was then told, "Well, actually, you should use it with an Ethernet cable." And I was like, mm, "But the name of the speaker is Kef LS50 Wireless. It's not called the LS50 Active. <laughs> if it was, then it'd be cool to use it with a wire. And of course, you can. And I have a feeling many people do." But I, me being me, I was being curmudgeonly about it, I admit. I said, no, it's, it's called the LS50 wireless. So I got to use it. With anyway, it didn't go. And what I heard from the sound, what I remember from the sound was, it was good. But it wasn't, it didn't make me want to keep listening to it, even when I listened with wires. It just didn't connect for me. 
My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, coming to you five or six or seven days a week. And uh, please check back often. If you like this thing, please subscribe. Check out the playlist. There's speaker reviews, there's music reviews, there's headphone reviews, and lots and lots and lots of rants. There's almost 700 episodes here to choose from. So if you want to binge, this is going to be a very, very, very long binge. You can follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. And if you've gotten this far into the video, check out my Patreon, which can be found at P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac. Thank you so much for watching.